よく見ておけジークこれが私たちの住むレベリオクだ世界と比べれば鳥かごみたいに小さい私たちはここからどこにも行けずに、Where、have I heard this before? ここで暮らさなきゃいけない。Sounds oddly familiar. こんな朝早くにお客さんかい。我々はもう帰ります。んああ、エルディア人か。<笑> oh my god, even the janitor. よく覚えておけよ、チーク。Oh no, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, Zeke. On the one hand, I appreciate the fact that he's not shying Zeke from the truth. I mean, that's the reality, right? Although he's a little bit young, like, I don't know. Don't you want to shield them from the worst of it until they're ready to handle it? Either way, I sort of get that. But you gotta save the world stuff. That's a lot. Poor baby Zeke. Soul salvation. Is this gonna be a Zeke backstory episode? It looks like it is. I'm ready. I'm ready to have sympathy for Zeke. Show me. Social dance club? Is that what they're calling it? Honestly, I don't know what to believe about the, the lore anymore. There's just so many stories that have been written. For people's own convenience. What is our actual history? Who knows? We know that Grisha has some radical ideas, right? That's why he's attending his social dance club. But I could see it being a good cover to have Zeke sort of adopt the standard beliefs of this world for their own safety, which may have pushed him too far into it. And this grandfather is all about the, the narrative. He's all about the Marlene narrative. Is that、uh, McGath? Other dads play with their sons. All my dad does is dance. That sounds like a great time. Everyone likes studying with their dads. <laughs> Okay, so here he's counterbalancing it. So confusing for Zeke. He just spends his whole life in, in different worlds. And he's sort of an outcast, too, it seems. Here's the baseball. This guy sees his potential for baseball, unfortunately. You just killed a lot of people in this catch game. Nice. <laughs> One of the old, old titans. The original Beast Titan. What? Why would the Beast Titan not be, not be helpful? Guess what? I met a real dad. <laughs> I met my real father. Someone who actually plays with me. Oh, they're using Zeke as a tool for their plan. So Zeke had a rough childhood. <laughs> All Zeke wanted was some fatherly love. It seems like the person who was willing to give that to him is the one that ultimately shaped his destiny the most. Or maybe the two people. His grandfather and, and baseball dude. This is coming up in a whole bunch of shows, like this idea of using your kids as vehicles for your own desires. It's such a hazardous situation because I feel like kids, even if they're not directly aware of what's going on, the way they internalize it is like, this person doesn't care about me. If someone sees you as a tool for their own desire, the positive Positive regard isn't really for who you are. It's for how the other person wants to see you, which is weird. And the distance between that image and what you actually are is just pure weirdness and, and conflict. I also happen to think that in a way it's cowardly. You know, it's cowardly to not be able to do things yourself and then having to take like innocent people to carry that on. I think there's an important distinction to make, right? Which is not that you don't provide guidance. It's not that you don't have expectations, but I think it's better to have expectations of like proper conduct and behavior than like you have to be this thing. You have to spend your time this way. You have to achieve my dreams for me. Achieve your own damn dreams. You know what I mean? Let Zeke be Zeke and like be a father for him. Like give him a good personality. Equip him to handle the world so he cannot be so fearful or hateful or whatever. And it's a cool contrast between Grisha and this. Baseball guy, because baseball guy seems to weirdly have some regard for Zeke, although who knows, that could be fake, right? At least it gives Zeke attention. Whoops, you goofed. We know Magath is caring too of the kids in his way. He'll see Zeke's good qualities as well. He's like the Armin right now. Oh, 
You can't even stick around to watch. Oh. Keep it down at least. You can't talk privately. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Happy Fatherland, quality bonding time. Showing him some understanding. But you don't feel it, do you? At least he's got someone, I guess, but sort of know where this is going. That's the thing too, right? Like, there are so many lost souls. You know, there are just so many people who are desperately craving something that they've been looking for their entire lives that is linked to their survival biologically. You know what I mean? Like, human beings need to feel some sense of security in their world. That's extra potent as kids or adolescents or whatever. Literally, like, your body is screaming to you that your life is at stake or in danger. And that's such a powerful, destabilizing force if it goes incorrectly. There are people out there who, who will willingly scoop scoop you up and you're sort of at their mercy if you're bitter about the world or frustrated about your situation things that you perceive you lack that other people might have failures that mount up people will give you a way to channel that energy and it's often channeled towards things that are not in your in your best interest you know it's in the interest of those people or those groups even if sometimes that's an unconscious process it's just like the the ideas exist and people find them because they give them a justification for that outrage. It gives them a, a place to belong, let's say. And sadly, I feel like a lot of people never get out of that. They never realize that they've attached to things that would maybe be good as as temporary placeholders just to, you know, get them out into the world or get them to another stage of their lives. But once you live in that turbulence, the turbulence of like just not having the structure that you need or the, you know, the security in your world that you need, starting to ease back in those ideas or to start to disassociate with the things that you started to believe as like an adolescent, let's say, feels like going back to that tumultuous hellish existence where everything was in jeopardy. So this guy, I'm not saying he has bad interests necessarily, but Zeke sort of like He's gonna fall into it. He's gonna fall into the Marlene way of thinking. And this guy is just there for Zeke to give him that thing he's so desperately craving. And that doesn't mean he's doing it maliciously, but Zeke is just not gonna be able to navigate any other way at this age with that kind of trauma. This may be the first time he's ever heard that. From a warrior, no less. <laughs> It's a great cost for research. At least the guy's dedicated. You just haven't realized the Beast Titan's potential. Not so sure about that. Oh, this is choosing time. We all know how this goes down. You can definitely promote yourself. Get a little edge by just turning them in. Turn it in the father who's never there for you. The one who never bothered to teach you baseball or anything. And looks at you with hatred in his eyes when he's eating. <laughs> he tried to warn him. Aaron really is a chip off the old block, huh? This is awful. What do you do as Zeke? I love how this card is literally about nothing. It describes all these things they've tried and then ends with, and it still remains a mystery. This is the Crackers info card of season four. Oh, he can find it in him. Yeah, it does seem like he genuinely cares about Zeke. It's nice that he still has principles despite his experiences. He really does love his parents. It makes it all the more painful that they just see him as like a tool. Yeah, that's true. At this point, he's just a victim of his circumstances. Zeke will never take it easy ever again. And you can just feel Zeke's whole demeanor change, because now he belongs. His world is telling him that what he's doing is well aligned. And that's really it for a kid or an adolescent. That's that's everything. I mean, for adults for that matter, it's not just kids. Our feelings about our social standings are essential, you know, integral to our health, I think. But there's other things too that are important, like just our individual growth and formulating our own identities, our own opinions and stuff like that. But it's powerful, probably more powerful than is immediately obvious. It's tricky to even separate where you begin and where your environment ends. A lot of the times we become our environment and then think that that is, that is individuality. But a lot of the time, the thoughts and the actions and the beliefs are interchangeable and the 
constant is just like the needing of approval or the trying to fit in. And it's very difficult to tease out what's what and to separate from that in a healthy way. Because no human, except for maybe really bizarre exceptions, is immune from that force. We're just we're just social animals by nature. But it's such a pervasive force and it can it can go really, really wrong when things start out in this state of total chaos like Zeke's life did. And then to enter this kind of thing where he's borderline a hero for turning in his parents. He does develop his own thing though, right? So he does have a spark in him. Or he had experiences, enough experiences to make him think a little bit differently or to open his eyes a little bit. Not that that worked out really well either, but... Oh no! Is that it? Is that what he wants? That's not it, Zeke. That's not it. Why do you think I'm not going to die? I'm going to die. The depths of their hatred is just insane. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. As if that would ever work. Yeah, I mean, the, the big mistake there, I think, is that the Titans are terrible. The Titans are not the source of the evil. Human beings are the source of the evil. It sounds trivial, but... Like, you're not gonna erase war, especially with the way technology is going, and the way these nations just seem to be, like, bloodthirsty, all of them. The way he's putting it, it's like, this is the end to this terrible thing, the end to the evil, but it's it's really not at all, and it never will be, especially if people do things like Zeke is doing. Like, Zeke is the evil, really, and he's not a titan yet. You know what I mean? So not even getting into the ethics of it, which I feel are just pretty obvious, the results he wants, and the reasons he's talking about, are just off. They're, it's all off. Recently, I've been thinking about Erwin Smith. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, there are a couple of lingering questions that remain that Erwin raised. One of them is, who gets to decide, right? That's a big question here. Zeke obviously thinks he gets to decide. What's the truth? We've gotten a lot of that, but there's still a long way to go. And then there's, who do you think the real enemy is? And at one point, my perspective on that question was that it's not actually the Titans, it's the Marleans, let's say. Or at one point, I thought maybe it was like the people within the walls, which also happened to be true to some extent. But bigger picture, another reading of it is the enemy is humanity, or at least a certain element of humanity. And the way the show's turning out, it really isn't sides. It isn't cartoonishly evil characters and cartoonishly heroic characters. It's just like the weakness that exists in man to give into its worst impulses. And so far in this episode, I can definitely sympathize with Child Zeke. I can definitely feel for him. And I can also understand how he got here. But this to me is clearly terrible, this way of framing it, this whole plan. And also the things he's willing to do to get to that plan. And here Zeke goes, freeing people from suffering by throwing rocks at them. Is Eren on board with this or no? It's possible Eren is using Zeke in his own way. These damn birds. That's some good, good scouting. あの父親は生きていた。エレン、俺たちは被害者だ。お前はあの父親に洗脳されている。いつか必ず救い出してやるからな。いや、で、サモリ Yep. Who knows? Maybe Marley would have been wiped out in the meantime. Where do you stand, Aaron? I really I like don't know where his mind is, but I know he's willing to sacrifice. Sounds like an affirmative answer to Zeke's question. And the world lived happily ever after. Well, it's been fun watching the show with you guys. <laughs> it's been a wild ride and you know, there were some, some real deep lows there, but it was all worth it because Aaron Yeager saved the world from suffering. So see you guys for the next series. Yeah, I totally should have picked up on that, that Aaron was playing with that baseball at the hospital. Yeah.
楽しいなんつった安楽死お前はこれから癖い巨人の口の中で unmoved, ずいぶんと安らかな死に方だろう奪った仲間たちの命に比べてみれば奪ってない救ってやったんだ What a cynical view. サボーさん見ててくれよおまいガーデリジスイシサクファイスギムセフリバイゲットオーノー